Tom, thank you for joining us. It's been a very busy summer so far. You're about to enter your eighth season at the club. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to sort of sit down and sort of talk through some of the bits that the fans might have questions on, you know, with the ongoings at the club. But firstly, how's the summer been for you? Yeah, it's been been really busy. Um, we had the last last use of the stadium towards the end of May with Brighton Ladies. Um, so that gave us quite a quick turnaround of, yeah, essentially having June to, to make sure everything was prepared stadium-wise and uh, making sure that we were supporting Scott in, in the players coming back for pre-season. So, yeah, it's been a, a bit of a rapid turnaround. Uh, lots of hard work by, by everyone here and, yeah, just looking forward to get going now. Yeah, a good place to start would be season tickets. They've obviously been available for a while now. We haven't issued too many updates on them, but could you provide an update on how sales are going so far? Yeah, so we've been really pleased with sales. Um, we've just ticked over the thousand mark uh, this last week, um, which, yeah, Crawley fans will know is, is really good for us. Um, we're really pleased as a club with those numbers. Uh, I think especially considering you know our form last season, this is no sort of secret that it wasn't good enough from us as a club. Um, and the fact that yeah, fans have once again signed up in their numbers to come back for another season is is testament to them. And yeah, just just can't thank them enough really for for their support. It's it's, it's amazing and it's yeah truly it really is appreciated by the players, uh, manager and, and staff alike. Um, I know there's been a lot about when people can collect their season tickets. I'm pleased to announce they can they can pick them up from Monday. Uh, so yeah, the ticket office open from Monday at 10, uh, available for collection uh, before obviously yeah, first use against, against Bradford at the weekend. Yeah, we're only eight days away from the season, but we had a good test, didn't we, of the sort of stadium itself. Palace, the pre-season friendly, we were sold out. It was great support then, wasn't it? And obviously we saw success at the end of the last season with a 2-2 two two campaign. So, you know, we're making you know good steps, aren't we, in terms of increasing our attendances. So, so the support, I, I know I just said it, the, the support last season when we truly needed it was fantastic. Uh, and as you say, yeah, the, the numbers that we had towards the end of that last season, um, the support from at the 2-2 two two campaign and, yeah, the games in the running as a whole was amazing. Um, the 2-2, two two, yeah, as you say, was, was a big success and it's likely that we'll probably do something like that uh, later on in the season. Uh, and then, yeah, as you mentioned, the Crystal Palace, a uh, fantastic sort of turnout for, from everyone. Um, obviously, Palace <laughs> brought some brought some really good support down as well. So, yeah, look, I think from from Scott's point of view, it was a good run out for for the boys. You know, the cliche minutes in the legs, uh, and then for us operationally, it was it was great to have a, a first use of the stadium, I suppose, to a sellout crowd. So, um, yeah, just just really pleased, uh, and and yeah, just can't reiterate enough how much the support really is valued. Yeah, as you said, the support has been fantastic. Obviously. There are certain maybe challenges to when we have, you know, sold out stadiums. We saw that a little bit with the two at two games and obviously the Palace game as well. Some fans have been, you know, questioning whether we can do anything more to sort of help fans get into the stadium a little bit easier. Um, I believe you got a little bit of an update on that as, you know, there have been some sort of questions and queries about that over the summer. Yeah, so I think it's almost it's a good problem to have in that, you know, with the increased numbers that we are having, that we now need to find solutions to some issues that, that have arisen from that, as you said. Uh, the, the bottleneck in the in the southeast corner being one of them. I know that's obviously a, a bit of a pet peeve for for people new and old coming to, to games. Um, we, we've got plans. Uh, we're, we're currently awaiting quotes to to add an, an extra turnstile down in that corner. Um, so at the minute, we've essentially got four turnstiles that serve near enough the entire of the east stand as, as well as the south terrace. Um, so obviously, by getting another set of turnstiles put in down there, we'll hopefully alleviate some of those queuing uh, to get into the ground on a match day. Uh, and then obviously, yeah, you know, with, with the fan zone, that provided a bit of relief to the facilities down in that corner um, by offering some some extra space to, to get food, to get drink, uh, and just a bit more of a, a concourse area that historically we don't have here at the club. Um, one of the plans that we, we had in place um, for the Crystal Palace game, in not quite as how we wanted it, but as a bit of a, a test run, I suppose, was extending that fan zone out a bit more back down to Reds Bar. Um, we'll be running with that again for the Bradford game. Uh, so again, it essentially means there's just a bit more holding space for everyone. Uh, we're hopefully going to have some, some more food and drink vendors in lining down next to the ball court all the way down to Reds. So yeah, hopefully it will mean pre-game there can be a, a real sort of, hopefully a bit of a carnival atmosphere down there in the sun before the first league game. And then yeah, that will obviously also be open at half time. So fans down in this area will have a bit more, bit more space to, to move around and a bit more option uh, in terms of food and drink. Moving on to something that the fans have been sort of desperate to know about, it's the kit. Obviously, we are, as we've already said, only eight days away from the season. There are good reasons that we've um, you know, not released our kit yet. I feel like you probably want to explain a few of them, just sort of starting when the kit is going to be available and is it available for Bradford? 
Yep, so we're going to be unveiling the kit uh, next week. I believe the plan is mid... I'm looking at you guys, I can't remember the date. I think it was mid middle of next week. Uh, that will obviously then be worn by the boys on Saturday and equally on sale from Saturday as well. Uh, yeah, as you say, I obviously understand the, the fans' frustration in uh, not being able to have a glimpse of the kit and equally purchase it just yet. Uh, reason being for that was we had a slight delay on the, the retail side of things. Uh, we didn't want to release the kit and then have a bit of a gap between them being able to go on sale. Uh, in hindsight, that gap was maybe a bit longer than we thought, so it was a bit of a catch-22 with that really. Um, but yeah, as I say, we'll, we'll be having a new kit for the, for the Bradford game, released middle of next week, uh, and then yeah, on, on sale on sale that Saturday as well. Yeah, and just to sort of touch on a few other concerns, there is going to be a principal partner, isn't there, on the front of the shirt, and obviously a sleeve a sleeve partner as well. So, you know, it's going to be worth waiting for, isn't it? Yeah. So as you say, yeah, we'll have a new principal partner on the front of the shirt, uh, as well as a sleeve sponsor, which will also be announced uh, during next week. Uh, the away and third shirts will also—I forgot to mention—the away and third shirts will also be available to purchase uh, initially as a pre-order. Uh, again, there's been a slight delay in those coming from the retail side of things. Uh, they will be available probably towards the end of September, which I, again I appreciate is frustrating. But hopefully, when when the fans see the see the kit, especially the third kit, I think to my knowledge it's a colour that I don't think has ever been used before for for us. So. Yeah, they're, they're three really smart looking kits and hopefully fans will, will understand the, the delay and yeah, be pleased when they see them. Yeah, some eagle-eyed fans would have noticed already that you've got Nuffield Health underneath the badge on your top. That's a new partner for us as well. So um, yeah, just talk us a little bit through that deal and you know how good that is for the club. Yeah, it's a fantastic deal. Um, yeah, obviously, as, as you say, the, you can see them on, on my chest at the minute on the, on the polo shirts. Um, yeah, and, and they're going to be our partner for the players training, travel, as well as the staff training and travel. Um, so yeah, a fantastic partner for us, obviously uh, a similar sort of partnership to the one they had with the England England national team. Um, so yeah, fantastic work from, from Jamie Ablett and, and from our commercial team in securing that. Uh, and yeah, as you say, a new sleeve sponsor which will be announced uh, next week as well before the Bradford game. Uh, and yeah, I think similar to the, the fan support in terms of you know attendances at games, I've got to extend that, that thanks to, to our sponsors who have been key for us for you know, all the time I've been here these last eight years, we've had a really good core group of sponsors who have always unequivocally supported the club. And yeah, we're, we're really thankful for them. And we're lucky that this summer has seen uh, re renewals from a lot of those historical uh, customers, as well as yes, yeah, some new ones like Nuffield Health uh, and a few more to be announced over the coming weeks and months. Yeah, Nuffield will obviously be on the front of our training kit and that leads us on nicely to the next segment, which is our new training ground. Obviously, the lads will be down there wearing their new Nuffield merchandise down there. Just talk us through sort of the first couple of months now it's almost been, which is crazy to say, down at Falmer and sort of where where the plans, you know, can evolve and, you know, what we can expect in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, I mean, first, I think before I start talking about Falmer, I think, again, <laughs> I've got to pay tribute to, to Horsham and Southwater. Obviously, Horsham, you know, we, we've had a, a historically a really good relationship with uh, in terms of training ground usage, and they were fantastic towards the end of last season when we started to use Southwater, still allowing us to use their 3G and, and facilities when, when the pitch didn't allow. Um, we've got a really good relationship with Annie, Kev, uh, Sam, and everyone down there at Horsham. So, yeah, I'd just like to extend my thanks to them and equally to Southwater. And I think, you know, the time we were down there, there was a lot of learning from, from us as a club. Uh, it was a time whereby the, the, F the Falmer facility became available uh, and it was almost a bit too good of an opportunity to turn down. It was good for us financially uh, and the facilities down there, you know, everyone that goes down there I think will agree are, are a real sort of step up for us uh, by having everything on, on one site is, was, was key for Scott. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm sure you, you guys behind the camera will agree, when you're down there, to be able to, to turn up for work as a player and be on one site and have your, your grass pitches, your gym, your food, your meetings, rooms, all down on one site and not having to be jumping in a car is fantastic. And, yeah, we've been really pleased with, with what we've been able to do down there. Yeah, and there are obviously plans to evolve the training site as well. Obviously, you've sort of touched on a few of them there. I suppose there's another thank you to go out to the guys at um, Identity that have, you know, put the gym up and obviously the guys that built the gym as well. Um, you know, there are plans for this site that can make it, you know, a properly decent one for this level, aren't there? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, we're, we're, yeah, what, two months into to being there uh, and, yeah, we're, we're really pleased. I think Scott's really happy with, with where he's, he's at work every day and equally so are the players. Uh, it's been great to be able to go down with the new signings and, you know, almost be able to show off the facility. 
Uh, and yeah, as you say, we've got two grass pitches, uh, a bespoke goalkeeping area. We've got a specialist rehab uh, gym, like strength and conditioning room, uh, actually on the university campus that we've got access to. And then, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, our density have, have, have done us a sort of a gym marquee, um, which just finished earlier this week. So I believe the players had their first use of that today. So, yeah, we, we really do have everything all on one site. Uh, and it's, yeah, I think it's a, a real sort of proud moment for the club to have something of that, that level in our, in our arsenal. We mentioned pitches a lot there. Let's move on to the pitch at the stadium. It's always something that during the off-season, it's normally the first thing to happen, isn't it? it? Almost immediately, the pitch gets sort of ripped up and um, you know relayed. Just talk us through the developments that happen this summer. Yeah, I mean, every season, the complete turf care, uh, Evan, Ben and, and Eddie always do fantastic in terms of getting a pitch sort of presentable for us. And, and yeah, in terms of output for the players is always fantastic. And, and this summer has been no different. Uh, we've had the surface removed, we've had additional sand banding, drainage uh, installed, uh, the pitch was aerated and then seeded and yeah we're, we're really happy from where it was little over, I think it was little over five weeks to grow and we had from that last Brighton game up to that Crystal Palace usage and yeah I've got to pay tribute to, to Evan Riddler from Complete Turf Care in, in, in particular because yeah he, he's been out here working night and day along with obviously Ben and Eddie as well to, to get it looking as good as it is and yeah, to, to, to be at the stage that it was at the Palace game was fantastic. And yeah, as ever with, with, with complete turf gear, I think it'll only look to get better over the summer. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll perform well over the winter as well. Yeah, we've touched a lot on commercial already and obviously paid testament to the fantastic work that Jamie's done since he's joined the club. Another element of that is the hospitality. Um, it's something that we always, we don't tend to talk about, but last season we saw, you know, especially since you know the return since COVID, we've seen sort of rising numbers, haven't we, in hospitality? And for pretty much, I'd say over seventy-five percent of the games last year, or potentially even more, you might correct me here, we were sold out, weren't we? And it's you know it's been a real sort of something to shout about, really, in the last few months, isn't it? No, definitely. I, I think it's it's almost no surprise that the support on the terraces and in the stand has crossed over up to the hospitality lounge. Uh, and yeah, again, we've got a, a real core a real good core group of, of people and fans that, that are up there during during match days and it's a really good environment, it's a, it's a nice place to enjoy the game, uh, the food's gone down well and yeah just a, a nice atmosphere to, to be able to enjoy the football. Uh, as you say yeah we were really pleased with the numbers, we were largely sold out um, especially the second half of the season uh, and yeah we're just looking to kick on with that going into next year. Uh, a few minor improvements uh, for when, when fans are back for the Bradford game and then equally plans a bit more long term to, to really sort of reinvigorate that space and yeah, like what we're trying off the field, really trying to kick on with everything uh, in terms of the operation. Yeah, another thing that the fans perhaps don't tend to sort of see firsthand is the deal that we um, have with Brighton Hove Abbey and, and their women's team. Obviously, you know, they've played here for the last few seasons now. Um, just talk us through the sort of negotiations we've been having them this summer. Can we expect them to be here next season as well? Uh, yeah, so we're currently in negotiations uh, with regard to extending their, their deal. Um, I know there's sort of a lot of uh, questions that come from the fans in terms of what that deal brings to the club. Um, I think what I can say is that it's, it's a deal that is very much worthwhile for, for Crawley Town Football Club. Uh, equally, we do very much look after our own interests to make sure that it doesn't impact any of our day-to-day -day operations and obviously, you know, fundamentally importantly for, for Scott on a Saturday. Um, there's a lot of capital from Brian that go into the pitch, um, which we're obviously grateful for. Uh, and yeah, hopefully in the next sort of coming weeks and months, we might have a, a bit more news on that, but, but nothing, no, nothing to confirm at the minute. Yeah, and just to sort of summarise, really, we mentioned it at the start, it's been an absolutely hectic summer and I suppose there's just a lot of people around here that we, you know, we've got to pay testament to, you know, yourself included in that. We obviously, we can't forget the work that, that everybody does, can we? Yeah, no, I, I think you know we're not immune to to some of the feedback that that fans have and you know we understand i suppose when there's not a lot of news coming out i can understand that from from a you know season to get kit point of view i completely understand uh, equally i suppose yeah that the message that i can share is that there there are a lot of people who care a lot about this football club um, as you say it's my my eighth season here um, i'm not from the area and, and you know i moved here this club is firmly, firmly ingrained in me, as I know it is you guys behind the camera. Um, there's a lot of people here who have been here far longer than me. Um, you know, Rona behind Reds Bar, Dave the steward have, have all been here sort of 15, 20 years plus. And it truly is, it, it's, it's life for, for a lot of people here. 
Um, you know, we may not get everything right all the time, um, but but similar to Scott and, and the boys on the pitch, one thing I can guarantee is that everyone here is working night and day to, to improve this club, look to kick on and, and just have it as the best version it can be. Yeah, and I suppose the, the final message really, isn't it, is that we are all in this together. You know, we're, we'll all be here, you know, in eight days' time supporting Scott, supporting the players and, you know, we've all seen what we can do when we all club together, can't we? I think last season was a, was a fantastic example of it, you know, strength in adversity, uh, the support that the fans had on the terrace really did translate into the dressing room, into, into the office with us. Uh, and it was, yeah, just a great place to be, to have that sort of us against the world mentality. Um, you know, Scott's alluded that it's going to be a, a difficult season next year in terms of there's a lot of really big hitter clubs up there. But, you know, our, our, our history is being, you know, the plucky underdog. And I, I'm, I've seen no reason as to why we, we certainly can't look to, to give as good as we get next season. Cheers, Tom.